Hi, welcome to This Week in Ames. I'm Susan Guiazza. On today's show, we check in with the Ames Bike Coalition. My guest today is Jacob Nolte with the Ames Bike Coalition. Jacob, mm -hmm. welcome to the show. Thank you. I keep wanting to call you Jake. Do you people call you Jake? Uh, I prefer Jacob. Jacob, welcome <laughs> to the show. Uh, you're an avid biker. You've lived in Ames for several years. Tell me a little bit about what brought you to Ames and what you enjoy about biking. Uh, well, I came up uh, to Ames to go to school, um, graduated and stuck around. Um, I love, I guess, the freedom of biking. Um, you know, you can go where you want at, at the speed that you like. Uh, you can do a lot of different things on a bicycle, whether it's training to go fast or riding to the grocery store. Um, mm -hmm. And as a student at Iowa State, having a bike uh, around with you is really convenient, I would think. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of times it's faster than SciRide, although uh, the buses have the bike racks on there. And I use those quite often, um, you know, if it was really cold and snowing or even raining. But, yeah. And we were talking a little bit early, you said there have been very few times where you've actually ever thought, oh, it would be handy to have a car, that you really have adjusted rather quickly to just being a, a, a person who commutes by bike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been uh, several years since I've driven a car. Um, I sent it home with my folks, uh, so it's sitting at the farm, and yeah, I've been a, a bike commuter for several years. And interesting, in a climate like Iowa, I've seen a real change in the last couple of years where biking used to be something that was maybe a spring, summer, early fall activity, and yet... Mm -hmm you start seeing uh, year-round commuters more and more each year. Yeah, it's something that you work into. You know, they have studded tires, um, bikes that are meant, you know, for riding in the winter, you've probably seen the large fat tire bikes. Mm -hmm. um, and then just dressing warm is probably the most important thing. Ames is fairly small, so it's, uh, it's easy to get around. You're not out uh, in the cold for an extended period of time. So that makes it easier too. I think there's a lot of interest in our community about being um, a multimodal community where uh, we welcome all forms of transportation. Mm -hmm. um, from a biker's perspective, there's probably things that motorists do that you, maybe a motorist doesn't even realize that they're doing that, um, that make biking harder for, mm -hmm. for a cyclist. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, well, texting and driving would be number one. Um, Which is illegal. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're telling kidding. me you see that? Oh, all the time. Um, unfortunately, probably a majority of the people, and you can you can tell because their eyes are down here or, or their phone is in right in front of the steering wheel. Um, another big one is uh, speeding around the, the cyclist just to get to the stop sign, uh, you know, right in front of me or to speed up to the red light, uh, which is ironic because usually they trip it to be green and then I don't have to stop going through the light. Um, or, uh, you know, doing so when there's oncoming cars is just unsafe as well. So what would you suggest a motorist do before at more just gradually pass or be slower or? Uh, yeah, a gradual pass, you know, certainly moving into, uh, you know, into the next lane uh, mm -hmm. to go around and then waiting until it is clear. Um, and, you know, if we're uh, a half a block or a block away from the stop sign, then, then you know, just give the cyclist some space and, uh, you know, continue to pass after the intersection. I will tell you as a motorist, and I, I do cycle, but I definitely drive probably more frequently, um, it amazes me how much more visible a cyclist is with a flashing light on mm -hmm. as opposed to somebody who doesn't have anything and it's really kind of scary to suddenly uh, have a motion catch your eye and not a flashing light or any indication that there's yeah, somebody there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not only are lights a good idea, but they're required by law. Um, oftentimes I'll have lights on my bike at all times uh, during the day. You know, typically they're not on, but you know, dawn, dusk, and at night. And then I usually even have a, a spare set of lights in my bag um, in case one of them dies. Oh, that's a great idea. Well, as uh, we get uh, through the spring, we'll hit May fairly soon, and mm -hmm. May is a special week for a special month for bicyclists. Yeah, National Bike Month. And. Um, uh, really a time to focus on bike riding. As it gets warmer, I suppose we'll see more bikers come out. Oh, absolutely, especially in the Midwest and Iowa, you know, a lot of uh, fair weather cyclists in May, you know, when spring is here, that's when people are thinking about getting out, being more active and riding their bike. And you said you've, before that Ames is relatively small, but do you see that sort of biking community grow then as, a, as it warms up? Oh, absolutely, yep. Uh, even in the last few weeks, you see a lot more cyclists on the uh, bike paths and uh, riding through the parks and things like that. 
So as we get into construction season around Ames, does that affect bikers as well? Uh, it does a little bit. Um, you know, Sixth Street Bridge is under construction. Mm -hmm. However, they have a detour for cyclists and pedestrians just to uh, to go through the park. So although, um, you know, it's restricting cars, uh, cyclists aren't really affected in that situation. That is actually is a wonderful detour where um, if you're a pedestrian or a biker, your detour around Sixth Street really isn't too far out of the way. No. And, it, and it's actually very attractive. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. You know, it shows off there's a nice walking bridge through there. Um, you know, seeing people in the park, you know, just a little change of pace from riding on the road or the bumpy sidewalk. And it is paved. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, sometimes I know bikers are sort of given a gravel path or something that's mm -hmm. maybe not as um, conducive to biking. I know in different sections of Ames, as we've done construction, bikers have kind of had to be rerouted. Um, is that annoying as a biker or do you just... Uh, it's something that you adjust to. Um, I guess I, I can't speak for all cyclists, um, but uh, for the most part, uh, a bicycle can handle a lot of different terrain, and most of those paths are, you know, fairly well, even if they're uh, gravel, they're still nice and smooth. Okay. Um, what's your feeling about helmets? I always wear a helmet. I was actually in a, a cycling accident last summer and in a cast for three months. Had I not had a, psych, uh, a helmet on, I may not be talking to you to now. Oh, that's pretty amazing. What about kids who say, I don't need one? Um, well, you know, I guess that's up to them, but I would certainly recommend it. Uh, you know, it, it's a very cheap insurance policy. I know for, as a parent, I sort of demand that the kids I can control wear helmets, mm -hmm. and it's sort of required. But as they get older, um, you don't always, um, can't always keep an eye on them, and you just hope. You right. Know, please wear that helmet. But I can tell you that I have seen kids biking with helmets hanging on their handlebars. <laughs> yeah, and you know, part of it might, the kids might think it's not very cool to wear a helmet, uh, but it's a, certainly a smart idea. Yeah, absolutely. And you said you had an accident and you're yep. grateful to the helmet. Yes, absolutely. Yep. So even on, you know, short one, two, three block trips, I'll have my helmet on. Well, May is definitely the month to focus on bikes and bike safety. You mentioned Bike to Work Week. When is that? That is the 16th through the 20th. And what kind of activities are planned for Bike to Work Week? Uh, we have several breakfasts. Um, the last one is uh, Friday. That's will be down at Skunk River Cycles. Um, Wednesday, there's a, another one at Brookside Park, you know, just as we talked earlier, um, put on by Bike World. And we're very excited on Monday to welcome our cyclists to City Hall for the Bike to Work Week kickoff Monday, May 16th yeah, with that's, breakfast. That's right. Yeah, last year was the first year that we did that and had a great turnout. Um, and it was a cold, cold day, too, uh -huh. <laughs> and rainy. <laughs> yep, I remember that. And cyclists still showed up. It was really, really fun. Uh-huh. We're a tough crew. <laughs> well, we're looking forward again to hosting you for breakfast. Of course, anybody that wants to stop by is welcome. Bike to Work Week again is uh, Monday, May 16th through Friday, May 20th. Uh-huh. Jacob, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Again, you can get more information about the, uh, Bike to Work Week activities on our website. Look for that information closer to Bike to Work Week on May, uh, Monday, May 16th is when you'll have that breakfast at City Hall. Some other uh, items for your calendar. Don't forget, Saturday, April 23rd is the Water and Pollution Control Facility open house. You want to attend that. Mark your calendar, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Get some more information about that on our website at cityofames.org. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for watching, and tune in next week for this week in Ames.